to the September retreat of the Vivekananda Vedanta Society of Chicago. The retreat will be conducted by Swami Ishatmananda Ji, Swami in charge of the Vivekananda Vedanta Society of Chicago. Few reminders, the retreat is live on Zoom as well as on YouTube. The audience as prior retreats, the audience will be muted throughout the session. As you have questions throughout the session, uh, please type in the Zoom chat or on the YouTube live chat section, and one of our volunteers will read it out during the Q&A session. At the end of each session, we have two sessions this morning, there will be a Q&A session, so your questions will be read out then. Uh, we will now begin with a brief introductory video on Swami Ishatmanandaji. Swami Ishatmananda, Swami in charge of the Vivekananda Vedanta Society of Chicago, got associated with the Holy Order at the Ramakrishna Mission, Cherapunji, Meghalaya. Swami Ishatmananda received initiation from the 10th president of the Ramakrishna order, revered Swami Vireshwarananda-ji Maharaj, a disciple of Holy Mother Sri Sarada Devi. Swami Ishatmananda served at Advaita Ashram, Kolkata, an English publication center of the Ramakrishna order for 12 years. He received his monastic vows from revered Swami Gambhirananda-ji Maharaj, the 11th president of the Ramakrishna order. Swami Ishatmananda served at the well-known educational institution of the Ramakrishna Mission in Purulia, West Bengal. He has rendered services at the time of natural calamities in Assam, West Bengal and Odisha. He is the Founder Secretary of the Ramakrishna Mission Port Blair, Andaman Islands, where he built a home for destitute and orphans. Swami Ishatmananda was the principal come secretary of the Ramakrishna Mission School Narottam Nagar, Arunachal Pradesh, an educational institution that runs on the Gurukul system with four English medium schools. Swami Ishatmananda was the vice president of the Uttar Purbanchal. Ramakrishna Vivekananda Bhava Prachar Parishad In March of 2013, Swami Ishatmananda was appointed as the Swami in charge of the Vivekananda Vedanta Society of Chicago. We now invite Swami Ishatmanandaji to commence today's retreat on the topic Moving Towards Unity. Namaskar. Dear devotees and friends, there's a tradition that we are still maintaining, but we are missing the Ganges. The previously we used to go to the Ganges and then used to stay over there. We all, those who have already attained it, that retreat, that is a unique, along with discussing different spiritual things, living together 
and moving together, uh, that was really, really unique in Ganges. Maybe from the next year again, we'll be able to do it. And uh, our volunteers are continuously maintaining very nicely that place. And truly, we are missing you, your presence. So someday we will have. Let us begin this retreat, which I have given the title, Moving Towards Unity. The, as because the unity, this is very, very essential. Otherwise, we cannot make any progress. We cannot get the happiness. So the unity is necessary. And unity is two different types. One is external, another internal. We will give stress. We'll discuss mainly on the internal unity. So begin with the Vedic Mantra. Om Bang Me Manasi Pratishthita Mano Me Vachi Pratishthitam Havi Ravi Rima Edi Vedasya Ma Anistaha Me, my speech, be fixed in the mind. So, when you understand the meaning, that is really unique. Me, my speech be fixed in the mind. Second, mono me bachi pratishtitam. Me, my mind be fixed in the speech. That means there should not be any hypocrisy. I am thinking something and telling something else. Or what I am saying, I am not at all doing it or thinking. That is really terrible. So with that, one cannot make any progress in spiritual life. And obviously, we cannot get that joy, the unit, happiness. Avirabhirva edi, O Atman, manifest thyself unto me. Here, the prayer, the Atman, which is already within me, please manifest. And Vedasyama Anistha, may my mind and speech be fit to reveal the knowledge. The one who has not realized the Brahman will never be able to speak about the Brahman. That is the main idea, the unless and until we realize we won't be able to say about that, about God, about the Brahman, about the Paramatma, it is not possible. We can write many things, we can say many things, but exactly what is Brahman, what is God, what is Paramatma, it is only possible when one realizes that. This manifestation of that divinity within can only help one to express that. So the Vacha, the first thing that one should be very simple for the spiritual life. Why? Otherwise, you will never get the happiness. So what is our pursuit? Happiness. Madhusudan Saraswati, on his commentary, the Tika, is a Bhakti Rashayan, he mentioned that there are four goals in human life. In the, in the Mahabharata, they have described very uh, elaborately the goals of human life. The goals are four goals. Dharma, Artha, Kama, and Moksha. These are the four goals. But the Madhusudan Saraswati very correctly commented on that. So these are only external things. But at the back of it, it is only the happiness. So what we do, everything is nothing but for happiness. The, that is constantly we are going on pursuing how to get the happiness. Now the sociologist, they will suggest as a person is a part of a family, a group, a social uh, group attached with the nation or a race. So if those places, family, society, nation, they uh, become happy, the individual will also become happy. That is the idea of the socialist. 
they are discussing the uh, the idea is the external thing most of the if we are satisfied with whatever around us then we are happy that the sociologists they think sigmund freud and his followers have attempted to explain man in the terms of his libido according to them happiness of a person depends on that line now karl marx the famous writer of the das kapital he explained person in terms of economic progress for karl marx improved economic condition makes a person happy but we know it is not there are many people those who are rich but not at all happy there's a lot of other that i am not going to quote that the suicidal tendency is very high in a rich country in rich, rich society and the many of the countries who are do, those who are really really very rich they always try to commit suicide because they are not satisfied so this we cannot accept and it is not accepted then comes according to hebraic and christian tradition man's happiness depend on god's grace as because they think only god can give us the happiness on that only and socrates and plato this is the first time in they they say believe that the apart from body every human has a soul that is immortal human happiness depend on understanding this truth so this socrates and the plato they come to that conclusion now hinduism if hinduism consider a person a as a consistent of a self and non self this is very wonderfully because hinduism is an analysis hinduism is a research so when the people talk about hinduism who is the founder there is no founder because the rishis they were the researchers spiritual researchers they were going on researching on this subtle thing and their goal was to get the happiness they understood that for everything that we do we eat we sleep the friendship and the relatives all this wealth and everything that we do only for happiness but after analyzing the external world a little bit of happiness of course we get when you see a good friend we feel happy and among the the relatives we are happy and in success we are happy but it's all temporary every time it is changing so what is the happiness <clears throat> ultimately they come to the conclusion that we have to understand our root we have to understand where we begin so they started researching and they found that it is a uh, this a combination of the consciousness and at the same time inert so the body and all those things are inert but inside the body there is something which is called consciousness and the great advaitic uh, the literature samko karika it says what is this uh, the individual the term is as vyakt expressed what is that expressed one then they are giving hetu mat it has a reason anitya it is temporary abhyapi it is limited sakriya it is always active anika is many asrita it needs shelter linga it has a sign sabayava it has a form paratantra depending on others and that is vyaktam so this is the now from here we will start our journey so these are the qualities they analyzed and they see this is an individual this is the vyakta 
And whatever we see, name and form, is nothing but that vyakta. And then abhyakta, there must be something else. It says, yes, viparitam abhyaktam, opposite to this. <coughs> what is that opposite? It's a ahetu. There's no reason, but it is there. It is nityam, a permanent. It never changes. Vyapi, all pervading. Akriya, inactive. It is one. And eka, anasrita. It do not depend on any anyone. It doesn't need any shelter. Alinga, without any sign. And without form also, niravaya, independence, swatantra, and that is called abhyakta, unmanifested. So there is something which is manifested and another thing, the unmanifested. Combination of these two is we, the individual being. This is from the Shankarika. The same thing is mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita and here the Lord Krishna termed this individual as Shetra. Shetra, Shetra, Gya. These are the two terms he has used. What is the Shetra? Idam Shariram Kaunteya. Shetram Iti Abhidiyate. He is very clear. In the Shankarika, they are going on giving the idea, this is this, 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 this. Anything that is temporary, anything that is depending on others, anything that is a form, like that. And here, Lord Krishna, he directly points out, and it becomes easy for us, and he says, this is you. Idam shariram kaunte. Shetram vitya vidiyati. Now, what is the trouble? So we are the combination of both. We are having the inner, this body. At the same time, we are having something subtle, which is called prana. But it is not prana according to Sanskrit. But prana means something else. It is the consciousness. In our daily experience, we find that all these things around us, including our body, and along with this body associated, all our relatives, our friends, our, our society, everything constantly going on changing. We were little kids. Now we are all grown up men. And all those, at when we were little, those grown up people, what well, they have gone, they have they passed away. So obviously things are going on changing, going on changing. But something is constantly within us and it goes on saying, the I was a little boy. I have grown. That I, what is that I? It says that is the consciousness. And they'll be proving in different way. It's not depending on the statement, but proving it. And in Vedanta, they say it is the best thing you have to realize. Religion is realization. That's why Shami Vivekananda say. Now, if we realize what will happen, so that lastly, ultimately, we will find that it is only the joy, the eternal joy for which all the time we are hankering. Right from our childhood days, we hanker for joy. The company of mother was a great joy for a child. Then the company of the friends, then company of the family. So then the success that goes on in this way. So we are only going for the happiness, then it says the happiness will be possible if you understand. So first is the Kshetra. What is the Kshetra? This body. But along with the body, there is the consciousness. So it says that Lord Krishna is telling, etad yo vittitam prahu Kshetragya ititad vidha. The Kshetragya means the knower of the Kshetra. So what is the Kshetra? This body, only this body, anything that is, comes under the name and form. The whole Jagat, in the Sanskrit they say Jagat, 
Jagat means this world, this universe. It's nothing but only two. The Hindus are very intelligent. They don't give any big, big statements. They only they try to give it in a very small little you know, aphorism. There are only two words. Nama, Rupa, Jagat. What is this universe? It has a name and it has a form. Anything that has a form and must be having a name so that we can indicate that it comes under the Jagat. So if we understand these very clearly and understand that this is surviving not of itself, is depending on something else, then you become the knower of the Jagat. Then Shetra Gya Iti Tadbida. In the 13th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, Sri Krishna says, Etad Yobeti Tam Prahu, the knower the knowledgeable people, they say he is the Shetragya. Shetragyam Chapimam Vidhi. Next he says, Who is Shetragya? I, the God, because I reside in the hearts of everyone. So, what we should do? We should try to understand this God, this consciousness, which is the support of everything. And that is our goal. So we are moving towards the unity. The all diversity has come from that one, the unity. So our pursuit is happiness. It is possible if we try to understand or realize the one. So it says in this way, though in conclusion, we can say every individual, that is in the Sanskrit, they give lot many Name. So the, sometimes we get confused of that. It says it is a jada. The same thing we call jada. It's an inert. Then vyakta is manifested. Then shetra it is a field. Or sharira, the body, or the name and form. So all these things are known as jagat. And second, the chetan. Chetan means consciousness. Then abhyakta, unmanifested, it is very subtle. Shetra gya, the knower of the secret of the creation and atma. We are all associated, we are very much known about this atma. The different names only for the same thing. Now our goal is to reach to the unity and that is consciousness, which is hidden like a sting that holds all the flowers that makes the garden. So it is hidden, so it is difficult to understand. It has no form, it has no name. So how to go to that? And this is the way we are slowly moving towards. The religion is nothing but understanding that. Because both inert and consciousness must have originated from the same root. Here, as like a, the, when they research, they always take one thing uh, for granted. So this we are going to find out, but how? There is no clue. The unchattered way we have to go. So we are finding, okay, now something that has been created, there must be a creator. The what has been created within me, now I'm researching myself, then I find that there is something inert and also consciousness. The inert I very much understand because I can touch it. I can feel it. I can smell it. I can taste it. So by that way, I can understand that this is very much there. But at the same time, I feel that I am leaving, I'm existing. And that person over there is dead. He, he is also having a body. And all the sense organs that I am having, but it says it is dead, it cannot talk, it cannot move, there is no life. That, that means something is there. So by that way, not that somebody said and I'm accepting, but experiencing from my own experience. Yeah, that means this too. If that consciousness which is within me and I can talk, I can move, I can, I can say that I'm leaving, and the other, which is not only because of the consciousness, 
that means the consciousness was also being created by someone. So the consciousness and the inert, these two combining is this jagat. Now I have to find out who is the creator of this jagat. And if I can understand the creator, then there'll be no problem. So how to begin? The, again, we have to take the help of the rishis, the researchers, because they have already done it. Rishi bhi bahudha gita, chando bhi bividai pritak, brahma sutra padas chaiva, Hetumat bi binishchitai. The hetumat, the reason has already been explained by the rishis. Who are the rishis? Those who have realized the truth. Like the scientists. So they are the rishis. And that has been mentioned in many places. Not the only one rishi is saying like that. Sometimes the problem in the many paths, they don't understand any truth must be experienced by many, then that becomes proof that it is a real truth. If somebody says that I have only seen the sun, and none of you can see the sun, I'm the only person who is able to see the sun, then that is there's doubt maybe there, because he is just dictating, and we are without understanding. Uh, we are forced to accept it. No, this is not religion. Religion should be open. Anything should be open. And these are the processes I have applied and I got this result. If you apply the same processes, then you will also get the same result. And that is called the scientific proof. The Vedanta, that way, is now accepted everywhere because it is a science. No one dictating. Sometimes some people don't understand. So, you know, the, the naturally, the different type of mentalities are there. So they say in this way. But this is the way we have to understand that as because someone has already realized, and it is not only one person, Rishi, we, so many people, the same realization, and Chando Bhi Bividhi Pitha, and in the Again, in the different scriptures, different type of people at different times, different situations, same result they have found. So why not? So obviously, we should have this. When Swami Vivekananda said, when the people were doubting about Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, he said, why? If when we find the same thing manifesting in one person, which was manifested in the life of Sri Ramachandra, in the life of Sri Krishna, in the life of Sri Chaitanya, and all the great realized souls, the country accept him also a realized person. This, because the result is the same. Just because that is old, and we don't have any idea, and we feel like, oh, that was a god. We don't know whether the god was having four hands or not. It's all imagination. We don't know whether the Durga was having 10 hands or not. It's all imagination. There's some conception they have given in that form. But what is the problem if the person is having two hands? At the same time, all those great qualities that was manifested in the life of Krishna and Rama. Why can't we say Sri Rama Krishna is also the avatar? So this is the way the judgment should go. With an open mind. When you are going, it is not emotional but very rational, very rational way. So now that the rishis, they have said, they have given this opportunity uh, uh, to understand. So we will follow that. Analyzing these findings of the rishis, we find that this creation is like a tree whose roots are in the sky. This is a very peculiar tree. As a root is in the sky. And somewhere we do not know. And the branches are hanging and ever growing. The jagat is going on, increasing, increasing, increasing. It's a going on. But the root is somewhere. So that is in the 15th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita that begins Urdhamulam Adarshakam. 
Ashattam Prahura Bayam, like that. There's a root in the sky and the branches are down. What is the branches manifestation? But we have to go to the root. So Sankho Karika again, it described with the Prakriti. It says this, the, the, all the manifestation, do you know how it has come? So Samka, they will say in this way, Prakriti Mohan and Tato Ahamkar Tasmat Ganascha Shodashakaha Tasmat Api Shodashakat Panchabhya Panchabhutani. Now, is bringing down. The beginning is the Prakriti. We have to remember this particular term, Prakriti. The Prakriti is a very unique word that has been used by the Shankar. So, Prakriti Mohat, what is the Mohat? Material energy. So, the Prakriti is the force. And that is producing the material energy that is Mohan. And from that comes the Ahamkara, the ego. And the ego, the, from there, 16 tattvas. What are the 16 tattvas? The senses attain. Five karmendriya, five gyanendriya. So 10 senses. Then the mind plus Five tanmatra. Tanmatra means subtle uh, the things from where other things will come. That is called tanmatra. So thought is there. Full conception is there. So one person is a writer, is a poet, is a painter, or a sculpturist. He looks at a stone. The sculpturist looks at the stone. So many people looking at the stone. Same stone. But the sculpturist will look and say, oh, I can make a beautiful human figure out of this. So the human figure, it is there, is a tanmatra in a subtle form, in the mind, in the thought of the sculpturist. And then he goes on carving out from that stone, which was having no form in the, in the human way. So, and the beautiful human figure is curved. So where was that human? In the thought. So this is the tanmatra are like that. It is always there. Now it manifests. This is called tanmatra. That uh, in the... In the tanmatra, that uh, when the subtle thing is already there, from there only we can... So prakriti mohan, Tato Ahamkara, Tasmat Ganascha, and Tasmat, from those, it Panchabi, Panchabhutani, and five subtle tattva come from five gross bhutas. So slowly, 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 all these manifestations. Five gross bhutas. The matter, what are the five matters? Shiti, Apa, Teja, Maruta Bhyoma. So this is the ultimate. So what is all this that we see in this world? What is the manifestation that we see? Nothing but the earth, the fire, the water, the air, and the space. Only these five. Look at it, how the creation we are, go are going to understand. What is this creation? Only this combination of these five. And that is the reason that when the Hindus, they, in the evening and the other time, when they are doing the arati, this is very important. If you go to see the arati, of course, in the Hindu temple, the traditional Hindu temple, if you go, all the time they will show only the light. Because the Rama temple over here, the people, they go, they like to offer. And they say, Acha, all the time, only one thing they show, that is the light. But in the evening time, it's supposed to be the five. They will show a flower before the God. And that is the, uh, the symbol of the art, the flower. 
Then they will show the water in a conch. Then they will show there's a small piece of cloth that is the sky. Is the, and they'll be showing the light that is fire and also the fanning. So the Bayu Tatta. So these are the five gross things. And we offer that to God saying, everything is yours, including me. So what I can offer it to you? I only offer my devotion, my love. So these five tattas. Now, if we do a little mathematics to understand so what is actually happening at the primal nature called Mula Prakriti. Primal nature is the Mula Prakriti and Mula Prakriti, it, from there comes seven. It's term, if you can remember, Prakriti, Brikriti. Why I'm using all these terms? Because this is very interesting. As because we are trying to understand from the point of view of the Hinduism, the root. So if we go step by step, first one is the Prakriti. And from the Prakriti come Prakriti plus Bikriti, seven. So what is the Prakriti Bikriti? One is Buddhi, then Ahamkara, and Pancha Tanmatra. Tanmatram is subtle. Those we see in the manifested way, that is subtle. So buddhi plus ahamkara plus five. So five plus two, seven. Then comes bikriti, only bikriti. First is prakriti, then second stage prakriti and bikriti, and third only bikriti. The bikriti are 16. The 10 senses, pancha karmendriya, all the organs of action, and pancha gyanendriya, the organs of knowledge, plus mind, and plus five gross elements. Just we discussed the Shiti, Yapatej, Marud, Doma. The 16 plus 1 plus 5, that means total 16. So 16 plus 7 plus 1. The how many is called? 24. The, this is called. So Prakriti, then Prakriti, Prakriti. Then Bhikriti. So these are total 24. The Samkhya say the 24 Tattva, all the philosophy, they accept this. Then they explain in their own way. So what is this universe? The 24 Tattvas. It begins with the Prakriti. And what is Prakriti? Here in the Shankaracharya, in the Gaudapada Bhashya, he said prakriti means prakriyata utpadyate pradhanat asya iti prakriti. Prakriyata means utpadyate, it creates. What? Pradhanat. Pradhanat means the matter. That is why it is prakriti. You will notice that all our power is in the women. The Hindu Goddess are more powerful than the gods. Whenever the, the, now the Durga Puja is, it will be in the next month. So what is Durga? Is a mother, is a lady. Why not Shiva is going to fight? Why not Vishnu? They are powerful people. But no, the mother is only going. Why? She is Prakriti. Why Prakriti? Because we have given that form of creation. As because from the mother, the children are born. So in the Hindu conception, it becomes easy for us to understand that whatever is the creation, it comes from a mother, a lady. So you will find Jagadhatri, Durga, Kali, the power is the knowledge. So Saraswati and power is in wealth. So the Lakshmi, so all these powers in the hands of, so why Prakriti, they, they create, they, they are active. So this is why Prakriti, Prakriti that creates. What is Bikriti? It is only born, but it cannot create anything else. So these are the two extremes. One is Prakriti that creates, another Bikriti, 
that is only born cannot create anything else. In between, there's a prakriti brikriti. Just we have noticed the seven. So they are born, but at the same time, they have the capacity to create. That is why the prakriti brikriti. Now, what is the root now? The latest question that, what is the root? Shankar will say, yes, prakriti is the root. But Prakriti cannot create alone. Prakriti, from that, the creation. But it cannot create alone. There must be something else. And when it comes in contact with the Purusha, now the Shamkya, ultimately, it opens up and shows the power that is Purusha. That they say Purusha and Prakriti. Why they have given these two names? Because it becomes easy for us to understand. Because all the time we see that is a male and a female. So the Hindus, they always try to bring the subtle conception in a such a wonderful way, simple way, that people can understand that this Kali and Shiva, Shiva Kali. What is this Shiva and Kali? The same conception. The Shiva is lying down and the Kali is active on that. Kali is the Prakriti, Maha Kali, Maha Prakriti, the Maha, the word we use to give the respect. And what is the Shiva? Is the Purusha. How the creation comes? According to Shamkhya, the wind, the Purusha, it doesn't do anything, but it is the knowledge. When the Prakriti comes in contact with Purusha, then start creation. This is the Shamka idea. Then the challenge is how it is possible. Prakriti is an inner because it is not the consciousness. The consciousness is in the Purusha. How come the Prakriti, you would say, that is creating, it comes in contact, closeness. So as if it looks at. Friends, I don't know whether you have noticed or not. If you see the our uh, the Kali, you will find that there is a Shiva looking at the eye of the Kali. The, the moment it opens the eyes and looking at the Kali, that creation begins. So this is the unique conception. The people, they understand in a different way. This is the same way the Radha and Krishna, same, same philosophy, but they give only one, the male form, another female form, for the ordinary people to understand. And when they come and ask, so why it is? Why only male and female? So we say it is this. So it becomes, you know, the slowly, slowly you can take a person. The father was showing a star to his son, but the son was not finding the star in the sky. The father started with the river. They were standing on a on, on the rooftop, they say, son, can you see the river over there? Oh, yes, I can see. That's our village river. On the bank of the river, there is a tree. Yes, go on the top of the tree. Yes, I can see that. Then from there, go upward and upward and see on the sky, that is the star. So this is the process to manifest, to give the knowledge. So this is a unique way. Here also, they say it is Prakriti, because we can understand Prakriti. We can understand activity. We can understand the creation. Then they open up and say, Prakriti alone cannot do. Why? Anything that is creating, anything that is working, is going to be destroyed. Shall I remind you, in the Mahabharata war, that Krishna didn't take up any... Oh, Krishna was not fighting. Krishna, the God, he was only sitting and guiding Arjuna. Or Krishna himself could do, but he didn't do it. Why? Arjuna should do. The Krishna is the Purusha. And here in the Kurukshetra, Arjuna became the Prakriti, the active. The same way Sri Ramakrishna himself could do, but he didn't do anything. He reserved it for 
Swami Vivekananda. And it poured that power into him. And that young boy of 29 years, he came and he spoke and he conquered the whole world by that way. Because that is Prakriti. So the Prakriti is that, that which is active. Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, he gave the power to two. One is Ma Sharada Mani Devi, another to Shami Vivekananda. He himself didn't do anything. Why? He is the Purusha. So the conception of the Shamkas is a Purusha and Prakriti. The Purusha, it goes on creating. Now let us understand Prakriti, 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 and Prakriti. Then we will go to another uh, the chapter. What is Prakriti that creates? I was thinking how to explain this. When it came to my mind, so I think at our, maybe it is still there. I don't go to any shops, so I don't know. So the children, as a children, we used to have the one type of doll. So that is a wooden uh, the doll, and it is a duck, maybe Chinese or Japanese doll. But it's a beautiful duck. Now you open the duck, it, it, you can open it, then there is another duck. So you take out that one, the second one, you open that two, there is third one. Then from there, from the third, it comes out two small, small, the ducklings, ducklings like that. So now we can say the first one is the Prakriti. Second and third, which is the production of the first, but at the same time, they are also producing so they are prakriti, vikriti. Vikriti means only taken birth. The prakriti and vikriti, though they are produced of the production of the first one, they can also generate. So the vikriti. So prakriti, vikriti. Last two, they were taken out from the third one and they couldn't do anything. They, inside them, there was nothing. So they are pure vikriti. The prakriti that creates, prakriti vikriti, the one which is taking birth at the same time, it can create. And third is vikriti, which is only taking birth, but cannot create anything. Why we are discussing this? Because of the prakriti. Why this prakriti? Who created? It says this is the point from where the Vedanta deviates from Shamkhya. So we were going along with the Shamkhya, all of us. Now the Vedanta say, so who created Prakriti? No, it is eternal. Then if you say the Purusha is eternal, at the same time Prakriti is also eternal, then it becomes too eternal, how it can be? The two one must be only infinite is one. It cannot be two. So how the prakriti is also the same. But they say no. Prakriti is always the same. So no prakriti, it cannot be. Because prakriti is generating. Anything that is generating uses the gunas. What are the gunas? Sattva, Rajatama. The because uh, why I am just mentioning like this. Most of you. You, you are the, uh, the students of Vedanta and you are accustomed with these three types of different types of uh, the you know, the subjects that we discuss. The gunas. Suppose I say guna, immediately you know it is Satta Rajatama. If it is there within you, the Satta Rajatama, these three gunas, so you are going to be destroyed because you are having that Friends, we have to understand this subtle point. They always say that God creates. The moment God is creating, how the God is creating? Directly, if the God is creating, that means the God is using Sattva, Raja, Tama, these three qualities. When he is using these qualities, the obviously, is a philosophically, we have to conclude that he is going to be exhausted. 
So can God die? Swami Vivekananda is asking the question. Can God die? No, it is not possible. God cannot die. So how the God is creating? Vedanta gives the beautiful answer. It, says, it is all imagination. We divide from here. The Vedanta and the Samkhya divides from here. So Gaudapada in his commentary on the Samkhya Karika mentioned Sabhikara Prakriti. Prakriti, what that is changes. Prakriti is that which is changing. And Nirvikara Purusha. Purusha is eternal. Now the Gaudapada who is the propounder of the Vedanta, Advaita Vedanta, he is giving this. Up to this point, Vedanta and Shamka, now is it deviating. According to Shamka, Purusha aparinam dashi. That means Purusha doesn't create. Only Prakriti is the, a completely separate entity and it is eternal. But it creates. How? When it comes in contact with the Purusha. And they give an example. Suppose the iron. It is not. The iron is not uh, the fire. But when the iron is put into fire, iron itself becomes fire. So similarly, the Sankhya's they say, so if you are, the Prakriti is coming in contact with the Purusha, then obviously it start creating. Like the iron coming in contact with the fire become fire. But Vedanta says, no, it is not possible in that way. So he says, Prakriti is the power of Brahman always associated with Brahman. Then the creation, if you say it is real, so obviously the question will come like when the milk is becoming the yogurt, you cannot go back to the milk again. The, from the milk, if the yogurt has been created, it has been produced, it is possible. But by that way, if you explain the philosophically, you should be very, very careful. If you are saying that, the creation is this way and it is all permanent, then you are making a mistake because where these permanent things will go? It is not possible. So the Vedanta comes. One step ahead it takes us. And then the Hinduism becomes really perfect system. And here Vedanta says, of course the Prakriti, it is there with the Purusha. As because it is associated with the Purusha, it is always there. It has no beginning. Here the Purusha, the Samkhas, they say Purusha, Vedanta say Brahman. Samkhas say Prakriti, Vedanta say Maya. From now onwards, we will use the term Brahman and Maya. Now, Brahman and Maya, they are associated and Maya is the unique power of the Brahman. Now another question comes. Who created the Brahman which is again creating with its power, with the help of its power Maya? The same problem will come if the Brahman directly creating. He says no. Brahman is not creating directly. So they are very intelligent, you know, as because by this time, the Vedantin, they got the teaching of the Samkhyas. So they, on that, they make it, made the whole philosophy very perfectly. What is that? They say, you are creating every day in your dream. Are you not creating? We are, everyone. So when we are imagining Sitting, maybe we are awake, but we are thinking something. Are you not creating? We are. As a the writer, before painting down, he's creating the whole story in his mind. A poet creating a poem in his mind. 
the same way a person who is dreaming is creating the whole thing in his mind is it not possible yes the same way the brahman the consciousness created this in his mind ekaham bahushyam vihi he was alone and he started thinking i want to want to be many just thought and the creation he started creating within his mind and because of that creation and then what happened he used his power what is that power maya and what the maya did maya covered that dream and gave it as if presented it as if it is true it is real one person went to somebody's house and on the table there was apple so he picked up the apple and tried to bite it and then he realized this is not real apple and but the material they have used is wonderful so beautifully as if it is the real apple and that fellow took it up and then tried to bite he was befooled so what is it so so that way the whole world that we see the beautiful birds the trees the river the human being and different relations everything that we see and also the bad things is nothing but the imagination as it goes on in the movie when you go and look at the movie just like that from here we have to start with this imagination with this idea with this conception i should say that this world is nothing but the imagination of the brahman and that imagination which the brahman thought immediately maya came and gave a beautiful shape how the maya the power of that brahman is having two qualities one it can cover it so nicely and immediately it goes on giving so another shape on that you know that when the most of the people will be sometimes the children they simple they will go and say something and the my father was in the home but he said he is not at home so like that he will say immediately the mother will give no 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 what he is meaning actually the father was home means he was in the tv that we we could see him there but in reality he was not in the home the child could so by that way somehow they will be managing so this is the way we do the same way the maya is also doing the maya is covering so big shape and one is covering another is giving the another form which is not true how the vedantin will say have you not noticed many of the people just by seeing a rope they will start thinking that this is a snake and they are afraid of it there is no snake at all no where so who imagined snake you who was afraid you who wanted for help you so everything that you did is only because you imagined now this world that we are looking at sometimes we think what oh, is so good so friendly i am so successful i am so happy but after few days you find no people are criticizing you people are against you people are doing this so what is happening the same good thing becoming bad because everything is the imagination so if we can understand in this way then what will happen we will give up both the appreciation and also criticism won't touch us so that is the practice in our, our next we will talk to that so i think oh this is almost the one hour so now i should uh, have the questions so i was supposed to speak for 45 minutes and then to accept the questions okay if you like to uh, ask the question puja are you there is there pranam smaraj this is kishor Sure, I'll be reading out the questions, Maharaj. Uh, please. Uh, there are two questions. The first question is, 
As long as our identities are based on body, race, nation, with many other limited boundaries, how can we achieve the goal towards unity in the world? How can the perspective be changed in a majority of the population? Is the idea of moving towards unity only for spiritually evolved people? You see, now, so as I, in the beginning, I said, the unity, the, by that I meant, is the external unity is there. So, so many varieties of societies, they are coming and becoming an unity, like the United Nation of Na our United Nations. So it's all the nations, they have come together and become united. So that is one type of unity. So they are adjusting their own interest and then becoming friends. But here the unity means, it is the core unity that I am not having any difference with anything. And that is why we are discussing about the God, the Brahman, the Atman. So here today, the talk, I'm, the unity means only the God, or the Brahman. So that is the first thing. And as you are telling that how it is possible when your mind is already scattered with so many things, friends, that is the practice. In my second uh, in a discussion, we will we'll find that that is the practice we have to do. And there are three different ways, four different ways. You can choose anyone. Thank you. Any other question, Kishore? Yes, Maharaj. Uh, this question is from Neela Ashish Sarkar. Maharaj, what is the relationship between Maya and ego, Ahankara? The Ahankara itself is an ego. Uh, the, I mean, the Maya. Uh, the, the, what is the ego you say? Oh, I, I, I. What is this I? The moment I say I, I put my hand on my chest. I, I, I. But uh, am I this body? No. Then am I this mind? No. Then what is this ego? So when I was a little boy, my body was so little, and then it is slow, every day it is changing. One day it will be dilapidated and one day I will die, but still I think this body is mine. This ego, can you explain how it is? Now the mind, I go on I, that means if it is the mind, if we indicate the mind as I, the ego, mind is also changing. The think uh, the thoughts we used to think in our younger days, now it is completely different. Anything that changes are going to be destroyed. So what is this I then? And this I is nothing but the reflection of the consciousness on our buddhi, on our intellect. Now think of it. If we can go to the original, so we get a little light, reflected light of the moon. And we are so happy. We are writing poems of the poems because of the reflected light. But if we go to the sun, the source of light, imagine that. And not physically, you will burn over there. But the thing is, I'm talking about the light. If the light is original, consciousness is original, think of it. So that is our goal. So we are going to go to over there. Okay, thank you. Any, any other question? One more question, Maharaj. Yes. If, if Brahman is dreaming this world, then do we have the capacity to change this? And if so, how? It doesn't seem like we have control over the creation. We don't have the control over the creation. But we have control over myself, you know, ourselves. We can control ourselves, of course. So that is the way we have to think. So how it is possible? Now I am thinking that I am that. The I, this body, and this mind, this name, this form. And when it changes to, in a bitter, better way, and I, why, as a friend, you should not forget, our pursuit is only happiness. So when I am successful, I am happy. When I am not successful, I am unhappy. But when I go beyond that, I can change myself. That is the practice. Now, when we can practice that, every time, all the time, we are happy. 
So whatever maybe the Maya is creating, we don't bother about the Maya. We don't bother about the God's power even because we become God ourselves. That is Vedanta. This is a very bold statement. No one can think. Even when we say Aham Brahmashmi, the Hindu, which is worshipping only small stone and saying this is our, uh, the Govinda, this is my Shiva. And the Hindus, those who are worshipping the trees or the cows and people are laughing at them. Same Hindu, slowly, they're developing in the spiritual life. life. And one day they are declaring, Aham Brahmashmi, I am that consciousness. This is the beauty, you know. And no one can say that. They will say it is blasphemy. It is against God. But no, we are that. So we will come to that again. Thank you. Any other question, Kishore? Yes, Maharaj. Two more questions. Uh, one is from Chanda Majumdar. If, uh, if yeah. everything is Maya, then our thoughts, memory, and everything falls under Maya. Then with the help of these finite thoughts, how can we reach the infinite? Yes. So <laughs> this is a beautiful question. And the very good observation. Everything is nothing but Maya. The moment we understand that there is no Maya, and you need not to take the help of anything. You know that beauty is one uh, one gentleman is a devotee of Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna. He was asking, "Sir, how to realize God?" Then Sri Ramakrishna immediately took a piece of cloth and then hanged before them, in between them. And he said, can you see me now? No. Then he dropped that cloth. Can you see me now? Yes, I can. So I was there all the time. You were there also. But what was there in between? Maya. Or what is that Maya? The ego. The moment the ego goes away, you need not to strive. You are realizing yourself. It was just like that. So when we are thinking, if everything is Maya, Immediately the Maya vanishes. Suppose uh, someone is showing the magic. The, if, if you know the tricks of those magic, then you are not befooled by him. Otherwise, you will wonder, oh my God, how can he take out so many eggs from the same bottle? There was nothing actually. So he goes on showing. But if you know the trick, you are not bound by that. Those who doesn't know, for them, this is the problem. Just think in this way. Everything is nothing but the Maya. I am not affected by anything. Immediately, then and there, that very moment, you are free. And you will find the great joy. Thank you. One last question, Maharaj. Yes. Um, this is from Jodi from YouTube. Is Maya real or unreal expression of Brahman? Oh, this is another wonderful question. See, it is real. At the same time, it is unreal. Both. Sanna asanna pi ubayat mikano. In the Shankaracharya, he is mentioning, it is sat and at the same time, it is ashat. And at the same time, it is nothing. Why? Those who are under the spell of the Maya, for them, it is very much real. For those who are not under the spell of the Maya, for them, it is nothing. So that same time, same thing is binding someone and cannot bind someone. So it is Sat and Asat both. And at the same time, it is nothing. Thank you. In the Vivek Churamani, if you are interested to know about the Maya, you can read the Vivek Churamani. Almost in the beginning itself, Shankaracharya has given the wonderful description of the Maya. But the Maya every time we are imagining, we are experiencing, but we cannot catch hold of it. So I am thinking if I get this job, I will be happy. I got the job along with a very bad tempered boss. But now <laughs> every day you go on thinking if I can change the job and go to somewhere else because this terrible, the boss is giving me, tor torturing me. So in the beginning, I was thinking, I will again, suppose you change it, another problem will come. 
So this is the way it goes on, on and on. So that is called Maya. We go on thinking that well, I'm going to be happy if I do this. And after doing that, you feel, oh no. Or maybe if I could go over there, then I could be happy. That one, if, if I could get the friendship, I could be happy. Constantly, we are going on knocking our head and constantly we are experiencing little joy, a lot of uh, the miseries, but still we are under the spell of the Maya. So the moment we can break it, then over. Thank you. Okay. Maharaj, yes. we are almost at time and uh, there are two more questions. Do you want to answer them now? It's better. Let, let me complete. Okay. Hmm. Uh, one is from Pampa Nandi. Pranam Maharaj. Maharaj, I am eagerly to live a purposeful life with peace of mind. How to achieve my goal? For the peace of mind you like to know, right? This is the question, right? Uh, yes. So how to? So that, that is deep, the, in this world is very difficult to gaze, uh, difficult to get the total happiness. But what we always suggest and what we always practice all around us, different type of people will be there. There'll be good people, there'll be bad people, there'll be friends, there'll be enemies. But we have to manage, you know, otherwise, how you will survive. Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna himself, he was such an even minded person. Even then, also, the person who is to serve him, he is to torture him so much. Because Sri Ramakrishna one day told the Divine Mother, Mother, it is unbearable now. For every step he is torturing me. Shall I commit suicide? Sri Ramakrishna. He went to that far. So world is like this. You know, the Jagat is like this. But what we can do, as Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna says, that if a person is bad, you must hiss. You must say, hey, don't do like this. If you do, then I can also uh, do something bad to you. But don't do that. So that is the way you have to. Those who are good people, try to develop friendship with them. Those who are bad people, try to avoid them as maximum possible. And try to keep your mind always at the feet of God with the prayer. So go on taking the name of God and the pray, go on praying and you will find a real peace will come. And I believe in the last one. Pray, pray and pray to mother and surely she will support you and you will find the joy and peace. Thank you. Anything last else? question, Maharaj. Yes. From Mawali Saha, how to remove ego? <laughs> Yeah, that is the main route. So the whole, all these spiritual retreats and these talk, reading, practicing, only to remove the ego, you know. But Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna has a very practical you know, suggestions about it. The ego will never go. So keep it in such a way, say, I am the son of God. I am the daughter of God. I am the servant of God. I am related with God. So by that way, if you keep, that ego won't bind you, won't disturb you. So turn the ego. So Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna in Bengali, he is telling, more thou. just turn the ego towards God. You will find that there is no problem. See, in the Ramakrishna mission and uh, another, any organization, a religious organization, so you, so many thousands of people are coming and touching your feet and giving the so many different type of gifts. And if you start feeling that oh, this is for me, this is for me, the, if somebody is not giving, immediately you'll be angry. And then all the problem will come. But if you think just because I have a, this Gerua, the Sanyasa, and uh, at the name of Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna Swami Vivekananda, so that is the reason people are respecting me. So that the same respect won't uh, give you ego. 
So you'll be free from ego. Oh, I am sitting at the feet of Lord Sri Ramakrishna and I am taking the name of God. So the people are respecting me. So I must be very careful and going on increasing my prayer and meditation. So that will develop your spirituality and you won't be bound by the ego. This is the simplest way Sri Ramakrishna suggested. Then, Kishore. Is okay. Those are all the questions, Maharaj. We're okay. done with questions. So we will have another the chance to answer the question if you feel like. But I, I really appreciate the good, very good questions. Uh, I, I can understand that you are seriously reading Vedanta and understanding Vedanta. Now, moving towards the unity, the pursuing the happiness, we have come to know the one from which varieties are generated. Now, when, when we are slowly, step by step, we have come and our tree is a very peculiar tree. The branches are below and the root is in the sky. So usually, root goes to the, the earth, inside the earth, and the branches go towards the sky. Here, our, the tree, the root is in the sky, and that is the God, the Brahman, from where it is coming. Now, a philosophical problem that we have just solved, that is, if anyone is doing anything, so obviously, he's or she's using the Satya, Raja, Tama, etc. Gunas, any activity. So when you are active, when you are doing something, so obviously you come under the circle of destruction. The uh, creation and the destruction. So you will be destroyed. So what the God is doing? Using its power and separating the him from that power. The Brahman <clears throat> just thinking and creating the Maya with through the Maya Shakti. So it is said in the Vedanta, there is a Nirguna Brahma and Swaguna Brahma. So to make it very easy, the Swaguna, Guna means qualities. What are the qualities? Three, Satta, Raja and Tama. If you can remember this, the whole Vedanta philosophy is standing on this. Satta, Raja, Tama. Satta means best, very good. Raja is a mixture of good and bad, and tama, bad. So these three gunas, it is the present in every being. So this is the way the creation. Who is creating the first one? Either the Purusha or the Brahman. I'm using the, the terminologies. Or the God. These three, they are not creating themselves. They are separating themselves from the power and asking the power to do it. That power, we can term it as Prakriti or Maya Shakti, etc. So by that, it is creation. The one without a second is known as Brahman by the followers of Jnana Mark. Those who are following the path of knowledge, that is, they have fallen. So in Hinduism, this is the beauty. It is very broad and it gives you the opportunity to utilize your temperament. All are not the same temperament. So different type of people are there. So obviously, some people are there. They don't like to go and meditate. They don't like to go and make the girl and some of the ladies, they will you know, they're so eager to come and cook for God, to do the girl ending, so much work. But they're so happy to perform that. Why the temperament? And if you ask me, I'm so happy that they're coming and doing it. So if you ask me to do it, it will be terrible for me. So I cannot do that. So, and that means that I don't have the love for those things. So it depends. They are also devotee. They also love God. They're also very genuinely doing it, but they love to do that work. So they are so another category. Some people, they love to quietly sitting in one place and meditating, reading some books like that. So four different categories are there and four paths they have given. 
the here the three I'm mentioning right now. One is the path of knowledge. They'll be analyzing why it is this, why it is that. So they'll be analyzing philosophical analysis, not for the criticism. It is a philosophical analysis. And by that way, they are slowly proceeding and they are called the path of knowledge. And in the path of knowledge, ultimately, they reach to the goal and they term it as Brahman. And Brahman means consciousness all pervading. The consciousness all pervading, eternal, unchanging, etc. Another, the second is the devotion, the bhakti. They love, and that love, the sympathy, the emotion, that is the main power. One is analysis, another is the love. And they think the God as their child, so they'll be making the dress for the God. Now the winter is approaching, I have to put the warm clothing to my Krishna, how the Krishna will sleep like this. So all the you know, imagining, or that way, and they have a beautiful relation with the God, and they say Bhagavan. And this, what is this Bhagavan again? It is also the, they call it Vishnu, and the Vishnu means Bistare iti Vishnu, Bistara iti. It goes on expanding. So it is Vishnu. From the Vishnu, all other things. Another, they, those who are very quiet type, they sit in one place and meditate, that they are yogis, the path of meditation. Their goal is Paramatma. Why? They concentrate on their Atman, not on the body, but on the Atman, the consciousness. Who am I? They try to imagine that consciousness within. And by that way, they go and merge with Param, Param means the supreme Atma. That is again all pervading. Now the friends, the goal is wherever we go is all pervasiveness. It is everywhere. When it is everywhere, it is all pervasive. The obviously, those who are limited at the world. So we have to give up the limited thing and we have to go to the Supreme. In the 12th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna, in reply to Arjuna, mentioned the teaching of spiritual practices of these three paths. Though the paths are apparently different, but all these three, they have a basis, clear conception about the existence of the Supreme Being in whatever name we may call it. So either Brahman or Bhagavan or Paramatman, we may call it in different name, but unless and until you have a conception, clear conception, that there is some supreme being which is creating with his knowledge and power, and he is the main maker, at the same time he is the material, you will never come to any conclusion. So that's why the philosophy, you must have to have this con conception. Second, we all know that every being in the combination of gross and subtle, every being is nothing but the combination of gross and subtle. Now, where from the matter came? We know that the creator is the God. Okay, we can understand that. Because the intelligent cause is the God, the Supreme Being, the Brahman, the Paramatma. But the material cause, here the Vedanta says, it is the God again. That same Brahman is the material cause. The material cause and the intellectual cause, both are the same. So obviously, the created being are also the same. Now, for an example, if we say, I'm making the sweets, different varieties of sweets, the different forms and different names from the sugar. All varieties will be sweet only. 
because it is the sugar. If the elephant, the tiger, and the human being, and the trees and plants, each and everything is made of the Brahman, the consciousness, they must be conscious. That must be the basis. So on this, understanding this very clearly, I am nothing but God. That's why the Jesus said, I and my Father in heaven are one, not two, one. Then immediately he said, the kingdom of God is within you. Blessed are those who are pure in heart, for they shall see God. But they closed that door. When the people, those who are coming afterwards and then giving the analysis, explaining, sometimes they make the mistake and they say, no, 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 no. Jesus is the only begotten son of God and Jesus can see God. We cannot. We have to go through Jesus. So they wanted to make it one channel, one path. So it becomes easy for them. And mainly they used it for their own purposes. But here we say, no, it is all open. It's open for you. Think about it. Why we are not happy? Because we are trying to get the happiness from the created thing. We must have to go back to our own home. Suppose you go to a five-star hotel or seven-star hotel. For a few days, you'll be very happy living in that room and utilizing all the facilities over there. But then ultimately, when you come back to your own home, maybe a little humble home, but there is the joy, there is the comfort. There is no one to say to you anything. So by that way, when we come back to our own home, there is our freedom. And we can always enjoy. That is the joy. So if we go back to the root, our own home, then there is the joy. So what is our pursuit? What we are trying to get? Happiness. Joy. And the happiness and the joy, the bliss, different names. But we understand that. We feel that. Even if we can't express, but we can understand. Then one, the, sometimes the children will come and I will give, you, give them the candies. Then the parents naturally to teach them say, now what you should say, and uh, he will or she will remember. Then she will be looking and the blinking, then after, oh, then she says, thank you. I will see, before saying thank you, the smile on her face uh, for the candy, that was the great thanks for me. So that is the joy already expressed. So we have to go back to our own home. And there's a beautiful song that Swami Vivekananda sang before Sri Ramakrishna. It's called Mono Chala Nija Niketani. Sri Ramakrishna went into Samadhi after listening to that. And he liked Vivekananda. The very first song he sang, Oh my mind, let us go back to our own abode. Mono Chala Nija Niketani. So we are going back to our own abode. And what is that? Brahman. We are that Brahman. We have to go back there. So this, now this as because already that we are having. So how it is possible? You now the Krishna is suggesting and we, I will take the help of Lord Krishna to guide us. He said, Maya Vesha Mano Yemam Nitta Yukta Upasate Sraddhaya parayapetati me yukta tama mataha. Those who fixing the mind on me. Now this is very simple, very easy. The God is there and I fix my mind on God. And what is it? With faith, complete faith, sraddha. The sraddha, sraddha, it comes from the love. When I respect someone, at the back of my mind, there is a love. I respect my father. I respect my teacher. But at the back, there is a love. Without love, I cannot respect. I can obey. I can be afraid of my boss. And I can obey the boss. In the, in the army, in the military, they obey their commander. But doesn't mean that they have a strata for him. 
The Shraddha is a completely different thing. It is completely associated with love. The love and the oneness for him or her that generates the Shraddha. So the Krishna said, with the Shraddhaya Paraupaya, Shraddhaya Paraupaya and Nitta Yukta without break. Today I have a great devotion, then I come, and then tomorrow, no, I cannot come. Not like that. Regularly going on. So this is the, it's called the Bhalavasha, the love. The love is only one way. I go and love, I go and help, I go and serve. In return, I am not asking anything else. So this way, if it goes, so then only it is possible. So then without break, and the Yukta Tama, he is the best. In the devotional way, if we go, the moving towards the unity is like swimming against the flow. So if we you are just sailing towards that, wherever the river is flowing, it becomes very easy. But if you go against that current, against that flow of the river, then it is terrible, very, very hard. So what is this world? God has created. Why? For the game. And what is the game? He will be hide and seek type. He will give little joy. And then the most of the thing is misery. So we go and catch that. Then afterwards the misery come. Then the God will show another place. Oh, that is the source of joy. Let me go over there. So by that we go on, on and on. Pursuing. Then we get tired. Now we have to give up all those atten attractions. There will be so many attractions. You have to swim against that. Friends will be there, relatives will be there, name, fame, money, physical comfort. All they will be beckoning you, calling you constantly. But you have to say, no, thank you. Enough is enough. I have to move towards the unity. Lord Buddha, after leaving 500 times in different names and forms, then he said goodbye to the world and says, Jagat Dukkham, 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 Sarvam Dukkham. All that I see all around me are so temporary. So obviously that cannot give me the joy. So this is the way we have to think. We, have to, we are going against. The God has created the five sense organs. These five sense organs constantly taking us down to the five objects. Rupa, Rasa, Sabda, Sparsha, Ganga. If anyone says a good word about me, I'm so happy, I feel. Constantly go on brooding. Oh, the beautifully he or she say that I am this good, I am this good. If someone says something bad, I cannot forget all through my life. Even I can't sleep. The goes on thinking why they should come criticize me. Why? What do they know? And I will go on explaining to my friends and writing to the different people. What? Only a word only. Nothing else. Sometimes praising, sometimes criticizing. So why we should be disturbed so much? The, a good number of people they were writing against Swami Vivekananda when he was here in America. And uh, naturally, and you know, you know, the, some, sometimes people get jealous for so many things. Vivekananda was representing India. He was bringing good name for our country and society. Instead of understanding that, the two go, why Vivekananda? Why not me? I also can speak English. I also went to America. I also spoke then why they should not, then that is all jealousy. And that is the bane of our life and the bane of society. They went on criticizing. And not only that, in those days, you can imagine, sending a letter to America was so costly. But even then, they used to write long letters, criticizing and abusing Swami Vivekananda and to the address where he used to live. But those friends, where Swamiji used to live. So they, after reading that, used to say, why Swamiji was not giving answer? 
So Swamiji said, see, <laughs> I am such a personality. Either you should praise me or criticize me, but you cannot ignore me. Then by that way, he simply ignored those letters. So this is the way we have to survive. Some people will criticize, some people will love, some people will appreciate. So this goes on in the society. And all those people and myself, someday will no, none of us will be on the, on the face of the earth. So this is so temporary. Why to take that so seriously? As long as we survive, we have to keep our mind on a very higher level, and that is God. Ma Sharadamani Devi said, Tapasya, the austerity. Baba, what is Tapasya? Only you have to keep your mind at the feet of God. Sometimes by listening the, uh, the beautiful bhajans, devotional songs, and sometimes reciting the some stotras, sometimes reading good books, sometimes meditating, sometimes taking the name of God. As maximum time, the mind should go on thinking about the God. Then only we can go beyond the God's power, this Maya. Now this Maya, it makes the most ugly thing as a very beautiful. <laughs> Sometimes some people will, the same thing, when you see, oh, it is very ordinary. But someone will look to that, oh, it's so beautiful, so good, if I could get. So how it is happening? The same thing, two different person will be looking at and they will be feeling in a two different way. Isn't it very interesting? Because this is the what's of Maya. So they, Maya will be making like this. So one should be very, very careful, very, very careful. So what is the sannyasa? Understanding this truth. And then withdrawing your mind with all the senses, chakshu, karna, nashika, jiva, the eye, the nose, the ear, the tongue, and the touch, everything we should have to withdraw. Like the tortoise, you have to withdraw the whole thing. And not that you are dying like that. You are mixing with people. But at the same time, completely unattached. So now that God advising us to withdraw the sense organs and the sense, from the sense objects. Shami Vivekananda, in one of his poem, he, Kali the mother, so I, I can remember, he is mentioning, I will say that one line in Bengali, Puja tar shangram apar. Shada Parajai, Tahana Dorak Tuma, Puja, the worship. Swami Vivekananda is mentioning, is a, it's just like the war. You have fighting, a constant war between the bad and the good, the Ashura and Devata. This is the Puja, constantly in the mind, the same mind, the sometimes very bad thoughts are coming against some people, criticizing some people, and at the same time, good thoughts are also coming. This constantly fighting going on within my own mind, puja tar shangram apar. Apar means unlimited, constant going on. Sada parajay, and every moment you are defeated. Every moment, so many times we are defeated. Then he says, Ahana Dorak Tuma, you shouldn't be, you should not be afraid of that. You shouldn't be afraid of that because you know I am going to overcome this. Then afterwards, Churna Hok, Sartha Sadhuman, Ridai Shashan, Nachuk Tahate Shama. And Nachuk Tahate Shama, let the mother Kali dance over there. Where? In your heart. And what is this heart now? It's a cremation ground. How come it is a cremation ground? Because all my desire, all my dreams, all my ego, I have burnt over here. I have killed those. I have destroyed those. I have burned those over there. Now it is all pure. The Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna said that you can see God but not with this eye. 
You can think of God, but not with this mind, with a purified mind. What is the purification of mind? Shankaracharya, in the Vivek Chudamani, he mentioned it very seriously. He mentioned the mana shuddhi karana, that we have to purify our mind. Mana shuddhi karana, that as we purify our body, we have to purify our mind. So that we have to, how? By killing, by removing, by destroying, and truly understanding this ego, this desire, all this is creating the bondage. So I must remove that. What about the who likes the Brahman, which is infinite? Now, from the, you know, that, uh, the devotion, now we are coming to those who are not actually uh, believing in the existence of God, but the good people, and they feel that everywhere the consciousness is there. Even the scientists, they always say, yes, everywhere is nothing but that the atom is present. Atom, neutron, electron, proton, everywhere it is there. And in different shape. Similarly, everywhere the consciousness is there. So they say, and they give the their goal, how it is, he says, it is anidasham, it is indefinable. If I cannot define it, it is indefinable. Then unmanifested, abhyaktam, it is very subtle. Omnipresent, sarvatra dhamma, unthinkable, achinta, unchangeable, kutastha, immovable, achalam, Eternal dhruvam, unbreakable aksharam. How can I realize that? So they are thinking how to realize that Brahman in that way. They should withdraw all the senses from the objects and control their mind. Now the Lord Krishna is advising. First, in the Bhakti Yoga, to realize the God, you have to withdraw all your mind from the all sense objects and constantly you have to keep the mind at the feet of God. Either you are meditating or you are singing or, or you are listening about the God. All this is going on. But the practice is, and now that those who are attending this, uh, the, our retreat, you are listening to me so that your mind, all those thoughts are constantly on God, on holiness. So you are now pure. This very moment you are pure. Why? The moment you are away from the worldly thought, you are pure. What is purity? Th th thought about God. What is impurity? Thought about the world. And we constantly go on dancing in, in between these two. And the most of the time, if you can go towards the thought of God, then you are pure. So. Manasuddha karanam, you have to purify the mind. How to purify the mind? Then here the Lord says, samniyam indriya, indriya gramam. That means you have to control all the senses. The eye should go and see only the good things. The ear should only listen the inspiring words. The smell should be, give me the idea of a temple, the very beautiful fragrance, and uh, very uh, the the flower, and 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 then touch also by that way, taste also by that way. So samniya indriya grama, sarvatra samabuddhaya. This is the another thing for those who are trying to travel through the path of jnana. You have to see everyone equal. Oh, those, uh, they, they don't belong to my religion. They don't speak my language. They are, they are not following my culture. So they should, I should not talk to them, mix with them. I should hate them, fight with them. At the same time, following the Atma Jnana. No, it is not possible. Sarvatra Samabuddhaya. Same sightedness, same thought. They should engage themselves 
for the betterment of all. Sarva Bhuta Hite Rataha. See, so clearly our scripture, and that is also the popular scripture, Bhagavad Gita. We don't read, we don't understand, and then we complain that we are not understanding the religion, we are not understanding God. So it is very, very clear. Those who are fighting in the name of politics, in the name of economy, in the name of the geography, society, that is a different thing. But for those who are following the path of religion, no question, no difference. Those who talk about the differences, they don't do not understand anything of religion. They may be growing all the long beard and so many things, but they are not a religion. Religion means love. Religion means understanding. And religion means service. They should engage themselves for the betterment of others. Sarva Bhuta Hite Rataha. Sarva Bhuta. Not only my clan, not only my nation. Sarva Bhuta Hite Rataha. When I go and see the devotees, they are paying, are they donating so much of money, constructing temple. But then they are telling, it is only for our clan, not for others. And if the others are coming, then they'll be behaving such a way that you are not welcome over here. Do they think that God will be happy? How it is possible? But anyway, a little bit is also good. The Sarva Bhuta Hite Rataha. Shami Vivekananda introduced this service among the Hindu monks. First time, 10,000 years of the long history of Hinduism, first time the Hindu monks, they started physically serving the ill and give, teaching the illiterate people and going out to help the distressed people. Why? Because that is the way one should practice the jnana. Jnana doesn't mean only closing the doors and windows and sitting with some books. Not like that. Sarva Bhuta Hite Rata. He goes out for the betterment of each and every one. And that is the way. And this path is a little difficult, of course. And uh, Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, he mentioned those who are having the Deho Bodh, those who are having the body consciousness, they should not practice this. Going beyond the body consciousness, then only they are fit to follow the path of jnana. But this is only for our knowledge. Now, how they will practice? Now, the jnana margis, many of you know, or the time is short, I will quickly finish. The, the jnana margis, they don't meditate. On whom they will meditate? So obviously, they go on only thinking. Thought is the only process. They don't go and pray. They don't go and worship. They don't go and meditate. The how they practice, very, very special. That is constantly going on thinking. What they will think? The Mahabhakyas, Pragyanam Brahma. I am the cosmos. I am the consciousness. Understanding this. Second, it says that Tattvamasi, you are that Brahman. Third, Aham Ayamatma Brahma. This self is the Brahman. And finally, it says, Brihadaranna Gupanishad, Yayur Veda, it says, Aham Brahmashmi, I am that Brahman. They go on thinking and that way. Those who like to follow this path of yoga, union with Jivatma and Paramatma, for them, Lord Krishna, he says, Fix your mind and intellect on me, the Supreme Spirit, and no doubt you will live in me. Withdrawing the senses and the, this is the meditation processes. The people in different way, they learn meditation. And uh, the different type of meditation, even the Buddhists, they have also practiced different type of meditation. And uh, the only normal thing is try to withdraw the from the same subjects, all the senses. How will do it? Mind is just like a 
very naughty child. It did never like to sit anywhere. You have to give some activity, then only it is possible. So you give the activity that is called Manasa Puja. So when you sit, ask the mind, well, now you go and bring little water. Now wash the feet of God. Now bring a towel and then rinse that. Then bring some uh, flower, offer the flower at the feet of God. You are going on dictating your mind. So you are separated from your mind. So you are as if as a little boy, <coughs> very active. You are giving him that uh, all this thing and slowly teaching. So you are teaching your mind. And that is called Manasa Puja. By that way, now put the garland, then burn the incense sticks and bring these, bring that. So you are all within and you are having that. By that way, only it is possible. Mat karma parama bhava. Then it says that if it is possible, the other path the, of the three, then ultimately come the karma yoga. So they don't like to meditate. They don't like to dis dis discuss or ponder over the things. They don't have that type of emotion to go to the temple and pray. But they are very good people. They like to help others. When you say, you better do that, but without expecting anything in return. So then you get that, mat karma parama baba. You perform my work. Swami Vivekananda said, Whoever will work for me, my power will enter into him. What is the power? of The Shiva. That is the purity. And what is Swami Vivekananda's work? He says, to make people aware about their divinity and to help them to manifest that. That is the power. Through the goal is the Ananda, the slowly, the four different paths leading to that ananda. Main practice is the withdrawing the mind from the world and putting into that ideology. Now a very important question, how I shall know that I am making progress? In the spiritual life, we are going towards the unity, going towards the goal, but how I will know that I am making the progress? It says, as Bhagavan Siddhama Krishna, he gave the, the beautiful another story. The one rich man, a Jaminda, a landlord, he wanted to visit a poor man's house. And poor man was not having anything. So what to do? When I was in Andaman, suddenly the Pranam Mukherjee wanted to visit. The Pranam Mukherjee at that time, he was the foreign minister and also he was holding another position. Uh, so this naturally very important person, the local administration, they all came to me and say, Swamiji, where you are going to offer the seat and what he will do, which the pathway, which gate he will come. I don't see this is open. <laughs> we don't have any road. That time we were so poor in Andaman. So what to do? He has to come through this way, the muddy road. If it rains, I do not know what will happen. It becomes very slippery. So we have to help the VIP to come. And I am only having one wooden chair. And that time Andaman was very, very poor. Only one wooden chair and one wooden bench. I will see this wooden chair I can, I see it. So I will offer the bench for him. To, no, 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 what are you talking about? Then all they brought, they immediately the PWD people came. They make the road nicely inside our customer. And they brought the beautiful chairs and the carpet and the fan, everything. Then one day when we found that so many people are gathering inside our asthma and we understood that the VIP is coming. The same way, if the God is entering into your heart, what will happen? The God will purify your heart first, then he will decorate your heart and all people will start loving you. They will come and touch your feet. They will offer gift to you. They will say good words with you. And then you will be so popular. Then you will know that God is slowly manifesting within your heart. 
and he will be free from hatred and you'll be full of compassion you'll be free from ego you'll be full of friendliness you'll be free from mindness the mind i i that mindness will go and the full of contentment so these are the manifestations so we will know that we have reached the goal and we are near the that unity in the vishnu puran we find the conversation between hiranyakashipu and his son prahlad and prahlad says to his father as father was asking how is it that no one hates you or criticizes you everyone likes you and loves you it is how it is possible and the prahlad replied annesham yo na papani chintayati atmano yat tasya pap agama tat hetu abhavat na vidyate o father as because i do not think any bad thing about others as i don't think about myself to harm myself i also same way never think anything ill about others so i am not committing any pap there is sin cannot touch me so i am always happy so this is the way one can become happy then friends i will conclude before the realization and after the realization before the realization what it says in a shankara acharya in his dhanyashtaka so he mentioned uh, it is better that i will avoid that sanskrit is a long four line shloka he who always avoid company of the other people in the beginning when he is trying to practice so he is trying he avoid the worldly minded people as people they shun the snake same way consider physical beauty as a dead body who discard the sense objects as poison he becomes the paramahamsa and after that what happened when he becomes paramahamsa when he realizes that brahman then the shankara acharya singing in a very happy happy mood sampurnam jagadeepa nandana banam sarve api kalpadrumaha gangam barishamast barinibaha punya samasta kriyaha bacha prakrita sanskritaha shruti giro varanasi medini sarva avasthitarasya vastu vishaya drishte pare brahmani so beautifully the shankaracharya says sampurnam jagadeva nandana banam that jagat which he was discarding that the whole world becomes the heavenly garden and he enjoys over there sarve api kalpa drumaha any tree that he sees is it is like the wish fulfilling trees ganga barin samast bari nibaha anywhere any water is as pure as the ganga water punna samast kriya any work is a mundane or secular is that all everything is pure the sacred bacha prakrita sanskrita or the words that the people they use maybe sometimes very worldly or maybe very pure the words from the scriptures all become same to him shruti giro varanashi medhi and the whole world becomes the place like the varanashi holy place sarvabastiti asya vastu vishaya drishte pare brahmani sometimes some people will say we like to die in varanasi but for a man of realization any place is varanasi because his mind is full of god full of consciousness he has reached to that root he has reached to that unity and there is no diversity friends today the unity that we discussed the unity means 
there will be no second thought only one thought that i am that pure that i have thank you very much be sure is there any question but i'm late. but in anyway, maraj yes any there are five ten minutes we can take yes yeah any question yes some of these questions have already been answered in your talk but i'm going to read those anyway mm -hmm. um this is a question from swarnali how can we understand that we have advanced in sadhana or god realization or self realization right uh, we have already discussed it so you have to uh, this is in youtube <laughs> you have to go back and listen again so what are the beautiful qualities that you will manifest so how you will know that you are uh, advancing the wonderful good qualities will manifest you will find friendship the compassion love all those you automatically will generate within you that means you are proceeding towards god you know what bhagavan sri ramakrishna said sri ramakrishna said the more you are going towards the ganga the more cool breeze you will feel then from calcutta if you are going to the ganga so from that point he was telling inside the city it is a different the more you are going towards the ganga more cool breeze will be coming so by that way the more you are proceeding towards god the more love will come within you the more uh, in the friendship friendliness will come thank you second question yes the next question is from bishwarup ghosh pranam maharaj what is the happiness of a monk <laughs> the same happiness same happiness of a grihi or the householder and the monk happiness has uh, no differences see the moment you are asking this question means you are thinking the monk is not having as a wife the family the children the grandchildren then what happiness no no we are talking about the happiness of god here it is not that, that all the time in two hours again and again the one thing we discussed do we have to withdraw our mind from the sense objects that is worldly objects and concentrate it towards god so obviously is the same happiness for each and every one the happiness of the realization of god thank you the next question is from jodi please explain what is meant in vedanta that the effect is pre existent in the cause that is satkaryavada so th this is a different uh, another aspect you are talking about in vedanta it is very very clear it means uh, don't go to those terminologies this the simple thing that we say that in vedanta it says the brahma satya jagan mitta the jagan mitta in the what sense because it is temporary but brahma satya it is permanent so when we reach to that particular level then afterwards we see and everything is nothing but the same brahman now when we were children we never wanted to share our the play things with others suppose uh, the girl is carrying a one doll that she doesn't like to share it with others but for a senior it is nothing because when i was a little boy i was a kid i was also having some attachment to my doll then when you grow up the attachment goes away so what is that satkarya that is understanding the purity so this is all temporary what i am going to do with the doll so i give it away i share it then i go over grab something else thinking it is going to give me the permanent happiness no it is not then there are also you give up you give up you give up then ultimately you go and reach to that pure consciousness and you find that same consciousness reflecting in everyone and you become happy so the happiness is this so when the sat karya what is the good work so if we in that way explain is nothing but seeing that consciousness in every being 
think of the Swami Vivekananda that I just quoted. Each soul is potentially divine. Why he is telling like this? Because that is the truth. There is a Vedantic truth. And now he is asking each and every one, the philosophy should be, the, what is Vivekananda's philosophy? To make people aware about that, that they are pure and to help them to manifest. So why this two hour long our retreat is going on? Because to make people aware, myself and also the others, by that way we can understand Vedanta means it knows that everything is nothing but consciousness. At the same time, it knows the limitation of our mind and it knows the process to go beyond this limitation. Thank you. The next question is from Sarla. Pranams Maharaj, can you please give a simple explanation of what and who is Brahman and how to experience that? <laughs> so when the one boy came to his father, uh, the, the father was the guru and he was the student. He said, see, any time you talk about Brahman, and you say always these, 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 it goes above the head. We cannot understand that. So why can't you tell like this? That is a cow, that is a horse, and that this is a tree like that. This is Brahman. How can, why can't you say like that? Say, what is Brahman? The father said, you are Brahman. He wanted to point out, so you are Brahman. So what is that you? But that is I. Then. Another story it says, he asked the, the student to bring a fig, the small little fig, and he brought the fig, break it, he broke it. And there are small, small, tiny, little hundreds of seeds inside that little fig. And then a small, one little tiny seed will break it. He broke that, open that, it was so difficult even to break that. What is there? Nothing. But who says? There is that huge fig tree. In that seed, when you open, apparently there is nothing. But in reality, the huge fig tree is there. So we also, asti, aham asti, I am. And that is the proof of the Brahman. Thank you. Next question is from Nilashish Sarkar. Maharaj, among the four paths, is one path easier than others? Ramakrishna said that jnana is a difficult path. Bhakti is easier. But I also have read that Advaita says that jnana should be the primary way. Is hmm. the best way to practice all and maintain a balance? That is better, you know. That if you read the Bhagavad Gita, the whenever the Krishna is talking about the jnana, he is telling, Tashmad jnani bhavarjana. Now you must become a jnani. So he is giving the impetus on that. And then bhakti also same way. Karmi also same way. Tasma the yogi bhava arjuna. <laughs> it is actually inspiring all the four paths and all the same uh, the important. It is up to you. If you think that this path is good for me, then you choose that path mainly and then take the help of others and follow. Ramakrishna mission, it has combined all the whole four paths. If you look at the symbol of the Ramakrishna mission, you will find there is a circle of the snake. That is the symbol of yoga, snake. And then inside you will find the wavy water. That is the symbol of karma. Then you will find a rising sun. That is the symbol of jnana. Then a lotus, the symbol of bhakti, the jnana, karma, bhakti, yoga, all the four combined, that is the holistic de development, the four complete nice way it develops. And then you become the Paramahamsa. So naturally, I would suggest that you better follow the path of Sri Ramakrishna Vivekananda, which is the combination of all the four yogas. Thank you. Any other question? question? Yes, ma'am. 
If the thoughts about world is impure, how can we prevent such thoughts from entering the mind? Most of the times, thoughts are entered by outside situations, which we have no control on thought selection. Outside situations, sometimes we can control, you know. Then the, the, if you're looking at the movie, you're looking at these, reading books, sometimes that type of thoughts come. And what the thoughts will come, the worldly, so sometimes it will come. It doesn't matter at all. Ma Shardamani Devi said, Monir pa pap noy, koli yuge. Because in this, in this age, everywhere, wherever you look, advertisement is there and this, that. What to do? What we can constantly do, that is the japa. If you go on, take the name of God, that will go on purifying your mind. So that is the way we can purify our mind. We cannot go and stop all these things. Hey, you should not give this advertisement. You should not do this. You should not. That is all wrong. Only thing, if you control your own mind, how you can control, how you can purify, just go on taking the name of God. Suppose some bad thoughts are crossing your mind. It doesn't matter at all. Even in the Ganga water, sometimes the dirty things will flow. Does it mean the Ganga is becoming impure? No. So similarly, my mind is Ganga. So sometimes the bad thing may flow. Let it flow. But I am going on bathing in the purity. Take the name of God constantly. Pray to God. Situation will change. And you'll be always in that happiness. Thank you. Kishore, is that all? Uh, one last question, Maharaj. Hmm. From Swarnali. Is Diksha from Guru mandatory for self-realization? Not, I won't say mandatory, but this is very helpful because the, the, for many, many years, you know, the people, they have practiced, they have tested, they found if you have a guru, then obviously uh, through tradition, the practice, and psychologically, you accept the guru as the one who will be guiding you properly. Then you, whatever the guru says, of course, the not the bad thing. I go and kill them, beat with, fight with them. Not that type of guru. Those guru will ask you to meditate, to take the name of God, to help the poor, to read good books, and the guidance for your uh, and, uh, spiritual growth. And that helps us. A guru has said, and I have promised to the guru that morning I will take the name of God, and evening, so I am somehow out to take. So that pressure is there, and that gives us, as slowly, that helps. So if you go to the school, you learn very quickly. But if you're at home, you also learn from there. It is possible. But the school, if you go, you have a teacher, you learn very quickly. For everything, we need a teacher. Then why not for spiritual life? So guru is good by that way. Thank you. Thank you, then. Those are all the questions, Maharaj. Asha. So the Puja is going to say something? Um, thank you, Maharaj, for this session uh, to have your retreat. Uh, we, have, we also want to tell everyone that uh, the recording is available oh. on YouTube. Okay. If anyone wants to go back okay. and listen to okay. the talk. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, Maharaj. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's actually Puja's son, I think. He wants to yes, say Yeah, yeah, yeah. Achha. Uh See, that I should uh, thank you all, all the devotees who are attending uh, this retreat. And uh, this is really very rare. Uh, the those who are, now it is. it must be 11.30, as a, and you are supposed to go to Bay over there in India and other places. So, even then, many of you are attending this and listening to the talk. That proves that you are interested in spiritual life. I pray to Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, Ma Sharada Devi, Shamiji, and the, the, the all-powerful God. May you all be blessed. May all your prayer be fulfilled. Om Shanti. Shanti, 
शांति हरि ओम तत्सत थैंक यू